Hello, how are you today? Another session of uh, Kanji Life Lessons. Uh, today we have an interesting topic uh, ahead of us. Kanji Life Lessons, uh, part of a series that uh, I started uh, some time ago, not too long. Uh, the focus is on art, uh, life lessons, uh, career, and uh, uh, culture geared uh, towards uh, people who uh, might find a piece of uh, advice or what we generally refer to as self-help um, of benefit. Uh, Kanji Life Lessons came out of the series of uh, principles that uh, was developed uh, in, in the work I started some time ago mentoring young professionals, mainly in the, in the medic, medical career. Um, uh, as, as they uh, move across uh, different parts of the world. Uh, uh, and, and it consisted mostly of uh, physicians of African descent, uh, but many of the principles are now being um, shared across uh, professions and even outside of that primary uh, group of people. So the topic of today is called uh, Failed, So What? Failed, So What? Uh, this uh, touches on the subject of uh, failure, uh, or what people like to refer to as disappointment, and uh, what to do with it, how to handle it, and uh, what it could mean to different uh, individuals. Um, if you live long enough, um, by the time you probably get to your 30s, you start to you know, have records of uh, failures or disappointment. Uh, of course, we try to give it a better name and people try to make you feel good about your failure and uh, some don't even like to refer to, uh, or to disappointment as failures. Uh, but whatever name you call it, um, it does have the connotation of, you know, not being able to achieve a goal that someone set out to achieve. So the overall reaction is generally the same, um, and it, it varies uh, ranging across the spectrum. Uh, to some people, it's just uh, despair and hopelessness. To some other people, it's just uh, frustration and anger. And uh, in between those two extremes, you'll find uh, an, uh, a bunch of uh, you know individual uh, variations. So fear, panic, hysteria, withdrawal. Some even end up as getting as uh, getting depressed as a result of it, and in, uh, on many occasions uh, we've had instances of denial, um, which uh, doesn't make uh, recovering from such incident uh, so uh, easy. Um, so that that's what uh, disappointment does to us in general, and and it's understandable uh, in many on many occasions. Other plans or life plans are dependent on that uh, unfortunate uh, outcome. Um, in the program that we developed working with uh, young medical professionals or, or professionals uh, across all age groups, the emphasis was on how do we navigate uh, not doing well in a, in, in a particular examination or not being able to secure a particular career spot as one uh, strife for strive for advancement um, so that that's the uh, the basis on which uh, this whole idea was uh, worked on and um, many of uh, the, the approach in general to uh, dealing with those disappointments are transferable across professions uh, or different cultures and that's some of those principles I'll, I'll just uh, bring up here um, we'll give it some title or name, but I'm sure you'll find something that suits uh, best uh, to your situation. So, um, from the angle of a, a professional, you know, test taking or career advancement um, opportunities, um, of course, we're you know we're disappointed by not uh, get, gaining that prize, uh, winning that uh, award or securing that scholarship. Uh, if you're a researcher, you might have put a lot of hours into uh, trying to get a grant and that did not uh, come true. So, um, and, and that's, these are the possible outcomes. Uh, with the professional exams that we often uh, deal with, uh, these are doctors uh, preparing to 
are relocated to the United States, uh, mostly United States and Canada, uh, uh, and then less often to uh, to, to Europe. And um, you know the exams are pretty rigorous. The syllabus is expansive, and uh, it's not uncommon to find that people are uh, not succeeding in those exams. And with so much uh, resting on the outcome, uh, people just uh, get hit by uh, by you know when the when the uh, success they had planned for did not uh, materialize. Um, so that that's what. Uh, uh, the uh, the that's how we started to develop this whole idea of how do we cope with a failure. So, um, and and if you've listened to many of our other sessions, our approach is uh, fairly uh, direct. It's not the typical script you might find on other domain, and it's just mostly conversational. And that's why you see this uh, approach to dealing with the problem. So uh, usually, when I get those calls, or people reach out to me and. I just, you know, I operate on the same uh, principles. I always tell people, cry if you must cry. And, uh, you know, and you'll be amazed how many of us actually, you know, become tearful when we don't uh, attain what we set our eyes on. Uh, and, you know, men, women, we, we all de behave the same when things actually happen to us. So that crying face is, you know, understandable. We actually encourage it. Um, if you can do it alone, if you have shoulders to cry on, that's fine. But some people, it's not really clear-cut crying. It's just, you know, finding an excuse, complaining, and ranting, venting, whatever the name you want to give to that particular uh, uh, face of this, uh, of your response to the uh, unfavorable outcome. And then some hours later, a day or two later, sometimes we get back and we start talking about what really happened. Um, many times we could find a reason, maybe approach, technique, just a competition if it's something to do with a hotly contested uh, position. So uh, some of them we really cannot do much about, and some we can pinpoint you know, what we did wrong. But at the end of that conversation, I always tell people, let's stay kind of just go to this next angle, which I call perspective. So now you fail this exam, what does it mean? Is it really the end of the world? And once you start to break it down from that angle, people start to now see that, you know what, okay, it's, it, it's not the best thing I'd wished for myself, but it's not really the end of the world. One, you're alive, you're breathing, so that means there's a second chance. And that's where we start the work that, uh, you know, is required to, to turn that success around. So um, perspective is very important. And once you take that approach, uh, you might actually start to dig around that uh, uh, failure or item and see how you could spin it around to your advantage. Uh, so that's the next aspect. So cry, cry, if you have to cry, and then, you know, after we're done with all of that, why don't we uh, start to set a perspective uh, from which we can uh, better evaluate uh, the, the event. So that brings us to a more practical uh, aspect of navigating or moving on beyond that particular incident. And I often will tell people that only you can make it happen. You know, only you can turn your story around. Uh, so the onus is pretty much on you uh, to kind of retreat and then build up again and find a way to move forward. So that means uh, boosting the morale, um, doing away with the things that challenge us to do better, doubt, uh, insecurity, uh, anxiety, you know, fear. Um, and you start to now you know, single out all these aspects, and this will happen at every stage of your preparation as you try to make another attempt. If it's towards an examination, you start to second guess yourself and see whether you ask yourself whether you're capable. If it's a goal that you have your mind set on, you may even start wondering whether it's worth the effort. You know, all these um, demons start to play uh, into our spirit as we uh, move forward. And um, 
you know, with this, you start to, uh, we, we always bring up the issue of, okay, what's the alternative? And you hear people say, you know what, I've, got, I've made it this far, I'm not going back. So if that's your story, that means the alternative in your case might just be very straightforward. So another person, the actually reasonable alternative, and uh, as long as you're taking that particular decision uh, from a sense of not giving up, uh, they're worth considering. Uh, but rather than make that decision in an acute phase, it's always a good idea to wait and wait and wait because clarity comes with time. Uh, and same with that time, healing from the shock of not succeeding, uh, of course, and then you can get a better sense of what you need to do next. So never explore those alternatives very early. Many times we make a wrong move because it's centered on emotion and all these other forces. Um, and then you move on to what we call the second time around. You know, second time. There's always a second chance and you hear stories, they are bound uh, in, in the society where it's actually the failure of the first effort that resulted in exemplary performance. Um, in that particular individual, some people got denied an opportunity for work, and with that, they actually made a little pivot and they got a fantastic deal uh, that, that will, you know, actually give them a better story. Uh, some people, that particular exam became the story that they had to share with people. Uh, for some, the, 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 the pain of failure became their uh, ministry. So, uh, there's always that uh, angle to it. So what do we do second time around? And that comes to the issue of preparation, preparation, um, setting up a winner's mindset, uh, using the experience to move forward, uh, developing confidence. And uh, another strategy is actually use the indig indignation of failing and use it to power your effort uh, to move on to, uh, with, your, with your whatever plan you have uh, set for yourself. For some of us, failure might just be that wake-up call that we really need anyway, you know, because we, we, many times you don't really experience becomes your, your teacher and you could read all the books until something hits you and then you're like, okay, you know what, I never really looked at it from this angle. If you're still alive, that means there's a good chance of you uh, be, uh, being able to, uh, of you being able to, uh, you know, have another go at whatever you set your mind on. So that wake up, wake up call is, uh, uh, for some, the, the, the catalyst uh, for a greater future. Uh, so we'll, um, if you're just joining, this is a Kanji Life Lesson, a series of uh, uh, conversation around uh, life, career, art, and culture. Uh, occasionally during the sessions, I refer to one of the books I published in 2020. It's called Choose and Live Rich. I'll share that with you. And uh, today we may actually uh, refer to a, a couple of excerpts in that part, in that book, uh, as uh, it it has uh, pieces that are relevant to this uh, conversation. Uh, we also have a couple of artwork. I think the one right behind me will be the uh, focus of our conversation today. But we'll get to that in a few minutes. So uh, beyond the wake up call that we uh, mentioned earlier, you also now I have to figure out a way to a strategy, what we call putting your best foot forward. And that requires analysis of what you did wrong along the way, uh, what was ignored, what was overlooked, and uh, other factors that might not be so uh, visible, uh, you know, until much later on. Uh, so, and then with that effort, you you can then uh, give it a go. Um, you see that there's one aspect of this that I did not, re I am yet to mention, and that's the issue of faith and prayer. And you see this come up a lot, and even for the atheist amongst us, uh, I think when you hit a crisis or suffer some disappointment or mishap, we all have a way of digging deep into our spirituality. So it's, it's uh, actually a very powerful weapon when you, uh, as a complement to uh, all these other strategies we brought up and ideas on how to, you know, cope with uh, failure. Um, 
not only in just being able to uh, secure the success you're looking for, if it's an exam, passing that test, or even uh, to find the right direction. Because many times we're pursuing paths that don't really lead us anywhere, and we may not find out till like seven, eight years later. And for some, this uh, instance of failure or disappointment is actually the uh, barrier that set them in the right path. So you always have to, uh, irrespective of your fate, you know, you may want to kind of explore that area much better, seek for guidance, uh, pray for wisdom, and uh, so that your effort is not really, uh, that does not turn out to be a waste. So we'll break for a few uh, minutes, we'll talk about art, and, uh, and then we'll come to the last part of this uh, conversation. As you know, we try to keep our sessions under, with under 30 minutes, uh, as many of the professionals uh, have other important things to do. So the artwork I have behind me is kind of sandwiched between this uh, artificial tree and uh, another piece of work which is abstract on that side. But we're talking about this one right in the middle. Uh, you could see my hand uh, pointing in that direction. If you listen to my earlier uh, sessions, I talked about uh, using found objects. So that means pieces of wood that I found on the street, uh, items that are floating around. That piece, uh, the material came out of a uh, number of paneling that we took out from us, a, uh, a shell, and uh, it's about six, six foot uh, tall, so you probably, um, no, this, no, that particular one is not actually six foot, I think it's about four, four foot tall, and, um, you know, in terms of length, uh, four, uh, to, uh, four feet, and so it's hardwood, uh, you know, those plywood, compressed plywood, and that's what that is, uh, just from some, some shelving that uh, we dismantled. In that picture, you can see almost, uh, if you look close enough, almost it, it has this image of someone uh, that we're viewing from the side, you know, so that means, and uh, if you're familiar to some of this uh, trendy fashion, uh, you see that there's a headgear on that person's head, and as you follow that all the way down, it gets you to the uh, foot portion where you could see almost like a, a, a robe uh, that spanned the whole length of the, uh, the, the figure. Uh, it's, a, it's a figurative abstract. Uh, the title of that work is called uh, The Dancing Queen. Uh, it's uh, one of three uh, similar you know, artwork done with that same uh, style. What you'll find as you look at the image is there's a texture, um, you know, in the midsection it's almost like uh, obliquely uh, outlined, and you see that uh, technique being utilized, uh, uh, something a little different from what you see, some of them are proprietary style that I implement um, in the studio as I create my work. Uh, and um, that, that's what's striking about the texture to the surface, but more importantly, you can see just uh, a blend of color and uh, this uh, artwork of somebody almost dancing or heading out uh, to a party. Uh, so has a positive spin to it, you know, cheerful, dressy, uh, colorful, and that's what the artwork is. It's called Dancing Queen made of acrylic, uh, painted on hardwood, uh, a work from 2023. Uh, as I said earlier, all the works are painted by me. This is what I do uh, full time. I've been practicing medicine for 30 years uh, before changing course. Uh, so back to the subject that we all had, in, uh, that's the to uh, subject of today's topic, failed, so what? Uh, the focus is on this issue of dealing with disappointment and failure. And if you look at people that have accomplished phenomenal things, many of them will tell you events that happened in their life that forced them to make a, a an alternative decision. So that is, you know, uh, their story, they have to take an alternative path. For others, they have to, you know, go after that same goal. So, uh, so we all end up... Uh, 
in different direction but that failure is not something you should take lightly um, and I always tell people there's really no ideal time to kind of wish for such an experience um, some people get their failure when they're young I think in at those stages of your life you might have time as your friend and that might allow you to rectify and some uh, those failures come later in life you're in your 60 the disappointment hit uh, but in terms of how you spin it around I don't think time really matters that much everything depends on you and I'm sure you have so many uh, phrases and uh, adages on how you navigate uh, disappointment so whether it's a disappointment at age of 70 or 21 a lot depends on you and if you remember that word again that we said only you can make it happen only you can make it happen that's where you dig it, dig up into your faith you don't let doubts uh, wear you out and then you do the work that it entails to turn things around so um remember as we continue with this series uh, we keep using that phrase think 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 behind everything that we've talked about there's still an element of deep thinking many of us don't want to uh, many of us don't want to do the work and sometimes you have counselors that can guide you mentors that can guide you it still requires you to do that part so uh, before we conclude this uh, segment I'll do a little read of that book that I talked about uh, it's called choose and leave rich it's available on Amazon this book was written by me in 2020 and I'll read a section that says choose your pain yeah so there's a few lines here it says do not let your pain go to waste it is one of the phrases I sometimes use in my work advising others dealing with difficult situations Although the phrase is as simple as it reads, it is sometimes complex in its interpretation and even more complex in its implementation. Not everyone has the will to see beyond their pain, to think of ways to make it work for them. So that's one excerpt. And I'll move on to another page on that. And uh, it reads, like a visible scar on the skin of the bearer, our pain, once experienced, becomes part of our makeup for the duration of our existence on her. And just as one may try to lessen the visibility of a scar through the careful selection of the outfits one wears or with the deft use of cosmetics, so one can lessen the impact of a painful experience. The unpleasant situation does not always need to relate to extreme events uh, or something terminal to qualify to be chosen. In fact, all unpleasant experiences, both great and small, have hidden opportunities for those affected to choose and use them for greater good. The severity of the experience is not as important as what we allow the experience to birth in us. So that's the piece I'll read out of that. That chapter is uh, choosing your pain and using it to spin uh, your, your story around. So as we come to the end of that, I have a uh, three recommendations which is the number that I've always I try to keep these two and I'll uh, read them briefly and just touch on them so first re recommendation is don't act stupid be reasonable failure is not the end of the world number two don't give up prepare reevaluate and embrace your failure number three mitigate against future occurrence no need to hurry listen think 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 and I'll touch on that first aspect which says don't act stupid and I've had instances people get that disappointing news and they feel like okay you know what this is the end this is that, that, that and then we make some stupid uh, hurried decision so it's not the time to do that don't give up mitigate against future occurrence and uh, lastly remember we have to keep thinking as the phrase goes think 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 if you've enjoyed this session remember to stay connected this will bring this current episode to an end and uh, i'll continue to share the little bit that i know in my work with kanji um, and i hope to see you on another occasion thank you very much bye bye